out there, the casual fanatics, particularly those of you who live in the United States of America, Jeremy here. And this has been an extremely stressful week for all of us. The long national nightmare is not yet over. Oh, the election's over. But that doesn't mean it's the end of the nightmare. In fact, given who our current president-elect is, it could very well be just the beginning. For some reason, actually I know what the reason is, it's called the Electoral College, Hillary Clinton, who edged out the popular vote by a couple hundred thousand, did not win the presidency. Neither did Gary Johnson, who <laughs> didn't get much of a percentage of the vote at all, or Jill Stein, who, again, did not make an impact. No, the winner was someone who was very clearly racist, misogynist, homophobic, anti-Muslim, anti-Semite, elitist, all-around jackass, Donald Trump. And, especially considering how the votes broke down, that being that the uh, majority demographics for Donald Trump were white men and women, A lot of us out here in the world, uh, especially minority, minorities, uh, LGBTQA people, uh, ethnic minorities like African Americans, Hispanics, Asians, especially women of minority groups, we have been mad. We have been really mad. I know I don't sound, like, really, really animated and angry right now, but that's because it's been a long week and I'm freaking tired. Uh, Tuesday night, I didn't get to bed until about 1 a.m. my time. And even then, I was, I was basically forcing myself to go to bed. Um, last night, I got to bed but pretty early, but I, I still didn't get up still it wasn't entirely a restful sleep and again I had to force myself to go to bed on time I'm still tired I'm still angry I'm just really tired because okay in the primary, and I'm not saying this to try and put myself up on a moral pedestal here, or claim I have the moral high ground on this. In the primary, I voted for Bernie Sanders. When he conceded the primary and left the Democratic nomination to Hillary Clinton, I decided at that point that I was going to honor his wishes. I was going to stand by Hillary Clinton because I truthfully believe that Hillary Clinton was the best way for those of us who want to see actual progression in this country to have a chance at that and it's put me at odds with even some of my friends who thought that with the major two being Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, that both of them were just far too corrupt and that going third party was a better way. I don't think it worked. I don't think it made the statement that it was supposed to make in their minds. In fact, I think it muddied the waters even further and I think it led to someone who didn't win the popular vote winning by the electoral college some years ago 
around around the year 2000, I believe it was, because I was still in high school, when we had Bush and Gore. I wrote an essay for one of my classes about the Electoral College. I did my research on it. I, I read up on it. I'm not that big on essays, but, you know, so if you're motivated enough in a class, you'll do even stuff that you fucking hate. And back then, I thought the Electoral College should be banned. I still think it. In fact, I think it again now because it creates more problems than it solves. It doesn't give us a true president of the people. It was made in the 1800s to kind of counterbalance some of the larger some to try and give counterbalance to some of the smaller states so that bigger urban centers wouldn't completely throw it unfairly one way to another president president but it doesn't work that way anymore because it's because of there there is an imbalance with it it doesn't actually represent the people. It represents individual states, but it doesn't represent the people overall. It doesn't represent that the larger portion of America, by even by that much, rejected Donald Trump. And if you add in the third party votes as well, it, again, does... It again, the Electoral College does not reflect the fact that Americans, did, for the most part, did not want anything to do with him. Forty-eight percent of America might have, but fifty-two percent didn't. And despite our best wishes. We got him. And he's already started the Cognitive Dissonance World Tour. Uh, people who have no right being in positions that they are because they're so completely antithetical to what you would expect are in, are in positions of power. We have a climate change denier who is going to be leading the EPA once Trump is inaugurated. We have Rudy Giuliani slated to be the Attorney General. We have Ben Carson, who is supposedly a doctor, but is a creationist, does not believe in evolution, going to be our Secretary of Education. And if you don't think that that's significant, Keep in mind, a lot of the states that went full-on, undeniably red, are states that are the worst in the country for education, like my own home state, Oklahoma. Which, by the way, also rejected a raise for teachers simply because they didn't want to pay more taxes. Nice job, Oklahoma. And I know I'm taking this out of context, and I hate it when evangelicals do this, but my mind keeps coming back to this one Bible verse from the book of Mark, uh, 8.36, if I remember correctly. What does it profit someone if they gain the whole world, but they lose their soul? And that's what's happened...
There is someone around the apartment complex with a very loud, very annoying sport bike. Sorry about that. Anyway, as I was saying, that's exactly what white people have done in this election. The majority of the people who voted for Donald Trump are white. Black people, Hispanic people, Asian people, even educated white people, especially younger educated white people. We didn't vote for Trump. We didn't want any of that. But older and especially uneducated white people, they fell for the trap of Trump. And they helped Trump win enough states to be the second to be the second person in the last 16 years to win a presidency without winning the popular vote. And it hurts me because this is, it's already started. It's already started. There are transgendered people who have killed themselves out of the fear of what's to come. There's tangible tension and dread in the air. The only people who aren't scared are straight white people. I'm freaking scared. And aside from the ways in which I don't have privilege, that being that I'm poor, I'm a Democrat in a red state, I'm a geek. You know, I, I'm, you know, and I'm, I'm non-religious. You know, I, I gave up the privilege of Christianity. I mean, you might look at me and say, well, what are you worried about? You're a white boy. Aside from all the ways in which I, my privilege has been given up. I'm, it's not just about me. It's about the people that I love, respect, and care for. It's about the women I know who are going to be in danger of losing reproductive health help. Because of Republicans who would rather see them die than, than be able to get reproductive health help or, or, or get abortions if they need them. It's about my friends who are, are lesbians, who are gay, who are bisexual, who are transgender, who are gender fluid or gender queer, or who are asexual, that are going to be getting hated and possibly even killed because the vice president believes in conversion therapy, which is recognized by the United Nations as a form of torture. I'm scared for the people in my life who are ethnic minorities. People in my life, like my little brother, who are half Asian. People in my life who are African American, who are, are Middle Eastern, want, Latino, wonderful people that I know and love, that people like them right now are already getting hated and disparaged by the emboldened white supremacists. It's happened here in America already. Just like it did in England with Brexit, it's already happened. I'm scared for them even more than I'm scared for myself. And I'm pretty damn scared for myself. You know, just recently, I, I went on to a channel called Super Princess Tea Party, and on one of the videos she was talking about 
the various different things that were responsible and about how we shouldn't have to ap apologize or placate the people who voted for Trump, Trump just because they won. And I agreed with her on it. And I put a comment saying all of the things that white people have done, the voter suppression, uh, the racism against all kinds of races, the fact that, you know, white people, including white women, predominantly voted for someone who was very plainly, in all ways, a dangerous man. And the response I got for this? Well, aside from a comment of support from the person who made the video, the other response that I got was from someone who said that if I really want to fight white supremacy, the very best way that I can do that is to kill one white person in particular. Myself. I've never been diagnosed with depression. But I know what depression feels like. And I am certain that I have had it and probably still have it. I have seen the effects of depression. I have helped walk people off of the walk people back from the ledge, so to speak. And I've experienced people that I admire falling to depression and ultimately giving up their lives. And that's not someone I would wish on anybody. I don't care how vile of a person you are. I don't care how much I disagree with you. I'm not going to tell you to kill yourself. I don't believe that's the right thing to do. I don't believe that's what a sensible person does. I don't believe anyone deserves to be pressured into committing suicide. This person does not have that moral restriction. And that is not an opinion that I can respect. That's not an opinion that I'm willing to respect. I don't owe him a damn thing. I don't owe him anything. I don't owe him an apology. I don't owe under I don't owe him understanding. I don't even owe him a reply and in fact I didn't give him one. The only reply I gave was to click the flag and report him to YouTube. And I especially don't owe him by giving him what he wants. I'll be honest, comments like that, with the way my brain chemistry works, I'm a weird animal. Some people, comments like that may beat people down until they decide to commit suicide. And that's one reason why saying that is terrible because it actually can lead to people actually committing suicide and if not legally karmically makes you basically would make you guilty of murder in my mind but someone tries to tell me that my reaction is not to say you know what? Yeah, you're right. No. My reaction is like, if you want rid of me that badly, 
you're going to have to do it yourself. Because I'm not doing it for you. You think I deserve to die because I care about people that are other than myself, that don't look like me, that don't act like me, that may not even have the same opinions as me, that may not live their lives the same way I do? You think I deserve to die? The only way you're going to get to see me die is if you pull the trigger yourself. Because I'm not doing it for you. I'm not going to kill myself. Just because you say that I should kill myself because I hate white supremacists that much. Aside from that, what the hell good am I going to do fighting white supremacists if I'm dead? What motivation would I have to do that? Do you think I'd try to make a martyr out of myself for it? Honestly, most of the people that I know, if I were to do that, they would mourn my loss and they would ultimately realize, God, that was a stupid thing he did. And I know that they love and care for me. I would not expect any different of a reaction from them if I were to kill myself. But I'm not going to. Why? Because I don't believe in placating terrorists. I don't believe that I have a right as a white person to just forgive everyone who has wronged me. I don't believe I have a moral right to forgive everyone who's wronged me or the people that I care about. I believe that if they've gone to those links, if your opinion becomes actively hurtful to people, if it's something that you're spouting that has and can cause damage to people, even on the psychological level, your opinion is shit. And I don't owe you a damn thing. And I'm going to tell you. Even those that I know and love know that if they're doing something that I don't think is right, I'm not going to hold back. I'm going to let them know. I may try to do it diplomatically, but I'm not going to let it go. And I'm not going to just say, oh, well, okay, I, I guess. I don't owe it to the universe. I don't owe it to the country in which I was born and raised and have lived in all my life. To look at someone that I find absolutely deplorable, no pun intended, someone that I cannot stand in any way, shape, or form, someone whose values are so antithetical to my own, and tell them I'm going to work with them, or tell them that I'm going to give them what they want. I voted for Hillary Clinton because I believed in the greater good. I believed that we could continue to push things forward, to make things better for more people. And that's why I vote, voted first for Bernie and then for Hillary. I don't see any way that's going to happen with Trump as president. Even if this country survives the next four years... It will not be the same. It won't be the same as it is right now. It's not going to be the same as it was eight years ago. And it's certainly not going to be the same as it was even before I was eligible to vote. I've lived 32 years and I would 
venture to guess that I've seen more changes in society and in the world in my lifespan than my parents had from their birth to the time that they reached 32. The world has just been moving that fast and it's about to move even faster, quite possibly in reverse. This world has become the big rig, rigs truck moving 18, 18 octacillion miles per hour in reverse. But I'm not going to pack it in and kill myself for that. And I'm certainly not going to do it because some douchebag on YouTube thinks I should if I hate white people that much. Because I may hate myself, but I don't hate myself that much. And I certainly don't hate myself so much to placate someone that I hate even more than myself. You may have won the presidency, but you don't win my respect. The only way you can possibly win my respect is to, one, give me respect. Two, give my friends the respect that they deserve and ask for. And three, not try to make our lives a living fucking hell. White people, congratulations. You shot this country in reverse. But I'm going to make damn sure that I'm alive to see when the gears change and we start moving forward even faster than we're headed backwards. You don't get to dictate when my end is. I'm not going to end myself just because you say so. And you don't dictate what the end for this country is. The people of the United States do. And even by the slimmest of margins. Most of us said, we don't want your white supremacist jackass around. You can live if you want to. But, sooner or later, you're going to have to face the facts that you're not going to get your way. Go ahead. Try and bring hell on earth. Go ahead, try and bring darkness. Inside those of us who believe that humanity can be better than it is, there exists a light that shines that you cannot destroy. Game on.